we're going to go live. So, Okay. Welcome to the Friday Night Youth Challenge Praise In. Hallelujah. And we're here. We're live on site, but we're also live online. And we're live streaming through Youth Challenge. Amen. Praise and service on the YouTube Glory Chapel International Cathedral channel and on Facebook page live, the Glory Chapel International Cathedral Facebook page. What we're going to do without any further ado is I'm going to talk a little bit about this month, how we're framing up this month, and then we're going to have worship and then we're going to have a word. So I'm very excited for our preacher tonight, none other than the Reverend Pastor Tyrone E. Glasby. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's our first phase director at the Youth Challenge Men's Residential Center, and he's got a lot to share. And we've heard him preach. Some of you, if you haven't heard him preach, get ready, get ready, get ready, because you're going to hear a word from the Lord tonight. And the Holy Spirit is the one who makes it real to our spirit. Amen? So get ready for that. The worship tonight, we've pre-recorded the worship segment. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. It doesn't mean that it's not real. You're going to ask the Lord, by the power of his Holy Spirit, to allow you to enter into worship tonight. Let us worship the Lord, the Bible says, in the beauty of holiness. And look at the testimonies that are here tonight. And whether you're here in the building or you're watching on live stream, we are together because the Lord says, hallelujah. It says in the Bible, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, if you're not in the building, it doesn't mean you're not a part of the church. Hallelujah. So your house becomes a sanctuary, and you've invited the Lord to come in and help you worship his holy name. If you're struggling with something, you are in the right place. You are watching the right channel, because tonight you're going to give your cares and your burdens to the Lord. You confess your sin to the Lord and receive his forgiveness in the name of Jesus. That's what we're looking for on today tonight. So get ready. September is known across the nation as National Recovery Month. We're going to be focusing on testimonies of deliverance, testimonies of people who have been saved and delivered and found healing and are working with recovery in their life, but also people who are helping people. There's a whole work that's being done. We'll talk a little bit more about that as the month transpires. You'll hear more. I want you to stay tuned. So at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we're so grateful that you brought us together on tonight. We're grateful, O oh Lord, for the worship that we're about to enter into. So we need your Holy Spirit to help us do just that. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, come and help us tonight. We need you in our lives on tonight, Lord God. Help those, oh God, that are watching online to turn their apartment into a sanctuary, to turn that place, wherever they are, into a sanctuary, whether it's on a phone or whether it's on a computer or whether somehow they're tuning in just to hear the word that your Holy Spirit would meet them and minister to them in a special way. Father, we thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Then you hear 
our friend, oh God, especially in times of need, Lord. Never giving 
you to think about, amen, if it was Friday night and you were on your way out. Come on, if it was Friday night and you was getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Come on, if it was Friday night, not all of us can say that we would be having a glass of water to get ready. Amen. You know what you'd be having to get ready. Come on, it's Friday night. Come on, this is the night, amen, that you could praise God. Hallelujah. I know you might be a little tired and a little weary, amen, but this is the night to glorify God. This is the night to give God praise, amen. If you would think about, hallelujah, where he brought you from, amen, you would think about where he has you now, amen, where he's going to take you, amen. I'm going to get to your part in a minute, but you ought to go ahead and praise God. You ought to go ahead and put your hands together, make some noise, amen. You could stomp your feet, amen. You could shout, hallelujah, because the Bible says, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Think about where you were. Amen. And think about where you are and think about where you're going. Are you hearing me? Amen. I want you to know that God loves you. Well, I might as well say that again. God loves you. One more time. If nobody ever told it to you, I want you to know that God loves you. Amen. And let me go ahead and unplug it and tell you this while I'm at it. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. Come on, I'm preaching already. Amen. I got about a couple more turns and I'm going to take my seat. Amen. We'll get to all the preliminaries in a minute. But I want you to give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to give him your best praise. I know you want to save it for Sunday. I know you want to save it, amen, hallelujah, for when you're feeling better, amen, when you're doing better, amen. But I want you to know, hallelujah, you're doing better right now. If you can go like this, you're doing better than you ought to be doing. You're inhaling and exhaling the glory of God. I said inhaling and exhaling the glory of God. There are people right now on ventilators, amen, that would willingly trade places with you and I. There are people right now, amen, and they're on their way to the morgue, the mortuary, amen. Let me tell you, they would trade places with you and I, amen. I dare you to praise them, amen, on this Friday night, hallelujah. I dare you to praise them and say, God, if you be God at all, hallelujah, I need you to speak to me. Speak to my spirit, hallelujah. Speak to my inner man, hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Well, I'm just excited. Amen. I'm excited. My wife would say, Pastor, I've been preaching the chairs, amen, since March, hallelujah. And then my daughters and them would say, well, we're not chairs, amen, <laughs> hallelujah. So, amen, they caught me there. So I've been preaching to the family, yeah. amen, and those on live stream, amen. So it's good to see you in the house of God. So don't mind me if I get happy, amen, because there's people in the house of God. I said, there's people in God's house pandemic cannot stop God, cannot slow down God. I see Hall of Famer over there. I call him the Hall of Famer back in our softball days. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have, amen, legendary Lady Willie right here with us. Amen. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm going to tell you, hallelujah. We got youth challenge and representation, clinical team, amen, hallelujah. Glory Chapel is in the house, hallelujah. Live stream, amen. Elder Lester's got a team upstairs, amen. So you'll be able to hear us and they'll be able to view us. My family is watching. I'm going to just send a shout out and say hello. The church I get the pastor, uh, the privilege to serve, Glory Chapel Family Outreach, bless you, amen, hallelujah. And I'll say hello, mom. How you doing? Amen. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you, I told my mom, she was in the hospital, and I said, you know, I'm on such and such. She says, no, I know. I be watching you, Pastor Tyrone. My mom calls me Pastor Tyrone. This woman, man, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Woo, Lord God, help me. I'm telling you. All right, all right, all right. I'm just happy, and I know it. Amen. And I'm going to encourage you to get excited for God. Get excited for the things God can do. Amen. It was preached to me and taught to me that God can do this and God can do that. And I'm going to tell you, God can do what the preacher said. 
Amen. God can do it. God will do it. Amen. All right. Some of y'all, I don't know, but we're going to work with you. Amen. We're going to work with you because i uh, got a couple things to say. So we're going to highlight the month of September, right? Hope and recovery. Amen. It's a reality. You can recover. But you need to know hope. You lose hope, forget it. It's a done deal. You lose hope, it's a done deal. Amen. But there's hope. Amen. And the men at Youth Challenge, the ladies at Esther's home, remember you represent hope. Somebody else, amen, hallelujah, well, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I can change, amen. I don't know if I can have a new beginning, amen. We used to sing a song when I was in the program called I Can Begin Again with the passion of a child. Man, I'm going to tell you, God can start all over in your life, amen. I mean, I feel and sense the energy, amen, that I have, but I know the reality, amen. I'm 60 years old now. Are you hearing me? But I came in in 1992, amen, so we're farther than 1992, amen. We're going to be wrapping around the corner of 2022, so I don't have to go like this. I'll be able to do it by tens, 10, 20, 30, amen, serving God. I want you to know if God did it for me, he could do it for you. So we're going to highlight hope, amen, hallelujah, during these services. And let me tell you something that I have here that's going to really bless you, amen, because we're remembering the legacy, amen. And this is for those live stream and those in the building, amen. And I believe they can still, if they give, they can give in that little box that I see on their way out. So if you want to give to the Ministry of Youth Challenge, and that's for those that are in the house, you could do that online, amen. You could do that, amen. That's the International Cathedral of Glory Chapel and the Family Outreach and Youth Challenge family and friends. I encourage you to give, amen. But I'm going to tell you, let me tell you what's going on here now. I'm just playing with the phone. Amen. Uh, but we're going to be, we're continually celebrating 50 years. So you can go to www.youthchallenge.org. Amen. And you could find out what I'm going to be reading to you. But on the 26th of September, amen, we are going to be having a virtual celebration. It's on a Saturday from 9 to 5. Amen. Oh, it's, I told you back in the ancient of days, it's the new normal now. Things are done new, and, but we're still doing them. And we still have a fearless leader, Pastor Paul, amen, fighting and pushing through. And Reverend Esther and, uh, Gonzalez Torres, who's the executive director of Youth Challenge, amen, still fighting, pushing forward, amen, to get the message out. Because the pandemic has not slowed down the opioid addiction. The pandemic has not stopped those from going in the crack house, those from walking the red light district. Can I get a witness from somebody? Amen. The pandemic has not, amen, uh, stopped that. So it's not going to stop us. But I know the pandemic can't stop God. Amen. I know in the beginning you were nervous. I was nervous. We were nervous in the service. But now we're stepping out on faith. Forsaken all, I trust him. We're stepping out on faith. We're going to trust God. Amen. They're beautifying the sanctuary to keep everybody safe. Look at this wonderful, amen, apparatus that they have here. Amen. At last time I spoke here, I had a mask. Now I got my mask in my pocket. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, I, I still got it. We still CDC guidelines, social distancing. But I'm going to tell you, I'm still serving God with or without the mask. You can serve God with or without the mask. It's Youth Challenge Praise and Night with or without the mask. It's Youth Challenge Praise and Night. This is your night to give God the glory. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. I'm happy and I know it. I'm happy and I know it. I got about eight days worth of notes, but I'm going to condense it. Unless anybody want to stay here with me for eight days. Eight days, just Greg and I. Greg said eight years, give them eight days, he'll give you eight years. Amen. The rest of y'all, you, you really like me. You want me to come on, hit it and quit it and go on home. Amen. I'm with you, praise God. I'm going to go ahead and deliver the mail. Amen. Get back in my truck and go on home. Amen. Hallelujah. But let me pray. Oh, God, I love you. Father, I love you. I need you. These are your people, Lord. These are your people that you've given me the opportunity to speak to. Help me, God. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. 
let the word of God that's already anointed hit the mark. Somebody came for a word. They've been waiting for a word. Father, I pray that this word tonight will help them and encourage them. Give them hope to continue fighting, to continue pushing on. Father, we honor you. We honor the leadership. We honor the ministry of youth challenge and the legacy of Bishop Reverend Dr. Raul Gonzalez. We honor the memory, the legacy that there is a treasure in the ash. So we love you. We honor you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. amen. Come on, say amen like you mean it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, again, welcome Esther's home and Glory Chapel, International Cathedral, and amen, the Youth Challenge. Praise God. Uh, Glory Chapel Family Outreach, everybody. Amen. Uh, Pastor, amen, Pastor Vilma. Praise God. I left the office. She's there. Amen. Do, doing what she does, determined to keep it going. Amen. And, and Pastor Lady Willie, we just want to praise God for you and Reverend Jimmy. Amen. And all you wonderful, wonderful leaders, amen. I see my brother Hanan and his lovely wife, amen. Hallelujah. And Deacon Louie, I was going to preach his message. He preached a powerful message yesterday. Man, I'm going to tell you, I wrote notes. I was going to preach his message and wrestled with it. I, so I'm going to still borrow some points from it, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I just want to just give greetings to you, amen. And pray for me as, you know, I try to deliver this, amen, for you. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to go to a book that you probably don't go to much, amen, and it's called Ezra. Ezra, E-Z-R-A. Ezra, Old Testament. Amen? Ezra. Somebody say Ezra. Come on. That's where we're going. Ezra. Amen? We're going to the book of Ezra. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ezra chapter 7. Amen. And we're going to lift up verse 6. We're going to lift up verse 28, verse 6, verse 10, and verse 28. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 7, and I encourage you to read the whole book, right? I encourage you to read the whole book and then read Haggai, amen, because that would be like really a contemporary, a companion, you could say. that They go together a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit about that, amen. But it says, I just want to get right to verse uh, 6, right? And the Bible says, let me find verse 6. This is in small writing, but I told you I'm getting old, amen. This Ezra, this Ezra came up from Babylon, came up from the world, somebody said, right? This Ezra came up from the world. How many of us were out in the world? Three of us. Okay, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this Ezra came up from the from Babylon, came up from the world. He was a priest. This Ezra, amen, hallelujah, I'm talking about, the Bible says he was a teacher, well-versed in the law of Moses, which the, uh, amen, in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. The Bible says, let me pick this up here so I could get it better. Hallelujah. I need one of them Bibles with that big writing. You know what I mean? Anybody, anybody can agree out there? The king had granted him everything he asked for the hand of the Lord, his God, was on him. The hand of the Lord, Ezra's God, was upon him. That's what you want. That's what I want. That's what I yearn for. The hand of the Lord upon me. Verse 10, listen what it says. For Ezra had devoted himself. Anybody know what devoted is? What's devoted? Just throw it to me. If they say you're devoted, committed, sold out. He was devoted. He was committed. He was sold out. The Bible says, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to his teaching and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. Ezra was a man on a mission. Ezra came up out of the world, but he was a man on a mission. I know he was a priest, amen, but I'm going to tell you that God has, amen, ministry for you. God has something for you to do in the kingdom of God. 
You said, Pastor Preacher, you better back that up. I will. Don't have time to unfold it. But if you ever read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, amen, God says he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. In essence, that means before you were a bleep on the monitor, God knew you. Amen. Before whatever slid down and it came into you and you came through the birth canal, amen, God knew you. Every hair on your head. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? God knew where you would be at, amen, on November 4th, 2020. Woo! You missed that, but I got to go ahead and tell it to you again. God knew you would be here, amen, on, November, on, on September 4th, 2020. He knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you, amen? He doesn't want to harm you, but he wants to give you hope in a future, amen? I'm telling you, amen, if you get in this word and do what Ezra did, Ezra devoted, I like what Lady said, Lady Willie, she said, amen, the devoted is he committed himself to the word of God. Let me go ahead and bring it to the youth challenge, Esther's home for a minute. If you could commit yourself for such a time as this, amen, and allow God an opportunity to minister in your life and allow God to minister to your heart, amen, I'm telling you, amen, things will change. I'm telling you, amen, things will be different. I'm telling you that God will make you new. Oh, I know what you see now, amen, looking good and smelling good, amen, but I wasn't always looking good and smelling good, amen, the best looking brother in the room, amen, that's pride, I beat it down, I beat it down, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's, that's what happens when you get them haircuts, you get a fresh haircut, amen, everything else could be messed up, any brothers out there know what I'm talking about, you get a fresh haircut and you know, amen, hallelujah, you like Midas. But let me tell you, amen, committed and devoted. God knows what he has for you. And God knew you before you and I were formed in our mother's womb. The Bible says in another portion of Jeremiah, amen, I skip over chapter 17 and then I go back to it. Because you know what chapter 17 says? Amen, write it down and tell your neighbor. This one's going to sting, but it's okay. It says the heart is deceitful and above all, who else knows it? That's what the Bible says. Yeah, the Bible's real. Oh, the Bible is true. The Bible will let you know. Amen. But the Bible also says, as we get to Jeremiah 18, amen, hallelujah, that God is working on you and I. God is working, and it used the story to say how the potter is working on the clay, amen, and the clay, the clay that the potter was working on, amen, as he was molding it, was marred, amen. Some of us, amen, were marred, amen, but the potter says, I'm going to just reshape it, I'm just going to remake it, amen, I'm going to pull it up out of its condition, amen, pull it up out of the world, amen, and I'm going to change it, and the potter says, I I can do that, amen, because it's my clay, amen. How do I say and how do I know that? Because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We belong to God. I said we belong to God, amen. You're really not your own, amen. You belong to the living God. I learned that when Bishop Gonzalez did this. He said, I don't care if you just took a shower. You could take three showers, I ad-libbed, amen. But if you keep doing that, Amen. You're going to still get some dirt. You're going to get some dust. Amen. Uh, uh, some dirt. Amen. Because we are clay. We're jars of clay. But God, the Bible says, can make you and I for noble purposes. He could make you and I for ignoble purposes. You could be a prophet sitting right there. You could be an apostle sitting right there. You could be an evangelist. You could be a whatever God has for you sitting right there. I'm going to try to tell you, God said, hallelujah, that you and I need to be committed. We should be devoted. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you ought to be determined. Are you hearing me? Tap your neighbor and say, wake up, son, wake up. <laughs> hallelujah, this is too good. This is like that good movie they go to. Amen? Right? 
When I go to the movies, amen, hallelujah, and, and hopefully that's coming sometime in the future. But when I go to the movies, amen, there are times I want to sit next to my family. I have to, but I want to. And then there are times I know that when it gets scary, here comes, oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. What's happening? It's like, whoa, did we come to see this or not? Or what's going to happen or what's going to happen? Or if you're at home, same thing. Oh, let me tell you this part. Let me tell you. I didn't pay $15 for you to tell me any part. See, that's why I want you to wake up, because what I got is for you. You don't want somebody to come back later and tell you because they hear it right and tell it wrong. Oh, you missed that. Whew. Woo! Hear it right, but tell it wrong. Amen? God has a plan for you. Are you hearing me? Amen? Men, go like this. Come on. God is looking for men to praise and worship. Ladies, come on, come on. God is looking for the body, the body to worship and praise. Amen. That's the good stuff. That's the action. Amen. But then God wants us to fast. Oh, I know a little bit about that, too. He wants us to miss a meal. Now, I didn't say miss a meal, skip a meal. He wants you to miss meals with an S on it. Because I'm committed, I'm devoted, I'm going to miss a meal, I'm going to miss a few meals because I got to worship, I got to fast, amen, and then I got to mix it with prayer. I'm going to tell you, this man, this prophet Ezra, amen, hallelujah, was a man of God. He was a man of God. In my caption it says, Ezra, a man of the heart. A man of the heart. Now listen to this. It says, he applied God's word to himself before preaching it to others. Whew. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's some stuff right there that you know somebody else done been through before they try to tell you how to go through. Huh? Oh, I just hit a double right there and you missed it. Come on. I just hit a double right there. Come on. I understand. It was in the gap. It was in the gap. Amen. Listen, I want you to know, amen, that we've been through this. Huh? We've been through this. We heard yesterday at the men's Zoom, amen, hallelujah, that Paul was a man, hallelujah, that was one that you could go to for advice. I don't want to mess it up, amen. He was one, hallelujah, amen, that you could go to and get godly advice, receive the right counsel is what he said. You got to learn to receive the right counsel. Are you hearing me? And I'm here to tell you, amen, it really let it be a counseling session, amen. Forget about me, amen. Let it be God using me. That's what I pray. That's what I ask. I said, God, I don't want them to see me, and I know you see me, but I want them to sense the presence of God. I want them to know, hallelujah, what I'm telling them is true. And God said, then go to Ezra and let them know that Ezra, amen, hallelujah, studied it. Ezra applied it with the application before he preached it. I'm here to tell you, this is an application, amen, hallelujah, because somebody laid hands on me, amen, and said, do you want to give your heart to Jesus? Do you want to get saved? And I'm asking you tonight, do you want to get saved? Do you want to give your life to Jesus? Maybe you don't be the preacher. Maybe you're the usher. Maybe you don't become the usher. Maybe you're just the faithful, loyal member of the church, the body of Christ. Huh? As long as I'm in God, hallelujah, it really doesn't matter. Huh? Let me tell you this. Everybody wants to be with the big shots, hang out with the big shots, stomp with the big dogs, run with the big dogs. Amen. I'm going to tell you, sometimes big shots can be bug shots. You heard what I said? I was watching a man and a preacher. God gave it to him. God let him flourish. Amen. But, you know, sometimes we forget that it's God. And then you start patting your own self on the back. You start tooting your own horn. You start saying, look how I did it. And look what I did. And I say, uh-oh. Takes me back to when somebody says, you got a whole lot of eyes in the middle of it. Sin and pride is close by. Did you get it? 
you got a whole lot of eyes in it. Sin and pride are close by. This man, Ezra, this prophet, amen, hallelujah, this man of God, hallelujah, he was devoted, the Bible says. The Bible says, let me read it again, chapter 7, verse 10. I know you're there, but I'm going to read it. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observant of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. See, he had a mission, he had a mandate, amen, but he had multiple people that he had to speak the word of God to. See, this isn't just about you and your four and no more. Amen. This is about, hallelujah, Hartford, since we're in Hartford. I'm in Central Village. It's about Central Village. But I don't want to just relegate it to Central Village. I need it to go out to Musa, to Plainfield, to Brooklyn, down 395 to Norwich. And others, and others, New London, where I was born and raised. Amen? So it's not just Hartford. You got East Hartford. You got West Hartford. Amen? Hallelujah. What do we got after that? You got Avon, Rocky Hill. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, you just keep going and we just meet somewhere sharing the gospel, sharing the good news. Amen. Look what God has done. Amen. Look what God is doing. Amen. You talk to someone and I talk to someone. Are you getting anything? Come on. Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord, amen, was upon him. Say that to your neighbor. The hand of the Lord was upon him. Oh, come on, say it with me. The hand of the Lord was upon him. I want you to know the hand of God is upon us. The hand of God is upon our young people. I told my granddaughter, I said, you got faith, but we got faith because we're guardians. Amen. But she said, I want to go to school. I'll wear my mask. She said, I'll social distance. She said, but I want to go see and make some friends. I said, how was your first day? Da, 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 da. Where'd you sit for lunch? Oh, I sat by myself. I said, what happened to going to make friends? She said, oh, I sat by myself today. But I get it. She was just happy that she's in school. She's in high school. Oh, my goodness. First year in high school. Huh? My goodness. The other one, I'm leaving this morning, early. She's like, what you, you okay? Yeah. Oh, you're on virtual. See, now I like it because they have to get up, get it together, and sit in front of the virtual. You can't just be, I'm in my bed making noise so the teacher thinks, amen, that you're on the studies. They want to see you. They said, and if you want it, they go to technical school. If you want to put on your uniform, you could do that. Amen. Now, I have, this one's a 16-year-old, so now if they want to see her, now she got to fix her hair. <laughs> oh, come on. You know, if they're going to see me, not we're doing science, she's in biotechnology. Not that we're doing the science, but they're going to see me. I can't have this braid. I can't have this. No, they're going to see me. Hey, listen, whatever works for you, I'm just overjoyed that you're in front and the teachers are ministering, amen, and they're still being taught. Come on, somebody. See, I'm glad that you're in the house of God. I'm ecstatic to be in the house of God, but I'm glad you're in God's house because I'm a living witness. I'm a testimony, amen, and we got many testimonies here, amen, that God will do it, amen. And the song said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? God will do it. Hallelujah. All right. I'm trying to preach it, Reverend Hernan, but I got to turn the corner. I got to turn the corner. Hallelujah. Won't he do it? You got to tell yourself, ask your neighbor, amen, my other daughter, amen, all virtual, straight virtual. But this is the dean's list daughter, amen, and she wants to keep. I said, hey, you can't stay on the dean's list if you want to stay in the bed. Huh? You didn't get on the dean's list by staying in the bed. Are you hearing me? Amen. And she's working. Glory to God. Oh, Lord, I'm telling you. Man, listen, that's why I need haircuts, Reverend Hernan. If not, you'd be like, man, he's full gray. And there's nothing wrong with gray, but I'm telling you, I'd be, listen, 
full gray, and the doctor told me, I want you to lose 30 more pounds. I said, Doc, if I lose 30 pounds, they already look at us when we come into the ministry. I lose 30 pounds. I said, Doc, I'm going to have to talk to a counselor. Did you get what I'm talking about? Amen. Listen, I want to tell the doctor, God beautifies the meek. Amen. And this extra is, hallelujah, happy with God. You didn't get it. You like the doctor. You want me to lose the 30 pounds. I got it because that's the look he gave me. Just go ahead and lose the 30 pounds. All right. All right. The hand of the Lord, amen, the Bible tells us is upon Ezra. Another portion where he goes on and he says, the hand of the Lord, my God, amen, is upon me. See, you got to own God. Amen. And I mean that in the sense you have to personalize this thing. You have to let everyone know that my God, listen to me, is an awesome God. My God knows all about me. My God knows my name. My God knows every hair on my head. My God knows my walk. He knows my talk. And if I got a TikTok, my God knows about my TikTok. Come on and say amen. How will they know by your faith, by your willingness to serve? That's what I love about this house. And this is really, and pastor, I'm going to tell you, because you know it. I'm not telling you nothing. You don't know. Another live testimony. Amen. There are churches that have closed. They kept the doors shut for their reason. But pastor, I believe, is walking by faith. Trusting God, CDC guidelines, y'all see it, right? I'm not saying nothing just because we on virtual, live stream, amen, you see it, amen. But the goal is to continue the work that God started, to continue the work. See, the enemy cannot stop this. The enemy cannot quiet this. Amen. We're here, hallelujah, to let the world know there's a treasure in the attic. You don't believe it? Tune in September 26th. Hallelujah. We're going to be doing the virtual. Amen. Ceremony. Hallelujah. It won't be walkathon as usual. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're still going to get the word out. They're going to have songs and they're going to have testimonies. Amen. About men and women that are overcoming or that have overcome. Amen. And we're just going to let the world know your son, your daughter. Amen. Your husband, your mom, your dad, your uncle, your boo. Hallelujah. Has a problem. Amen. We are here to help them. 24-7, 365 days out of the year for 50 years. We've been helping the hurting. We've been fighting the good fight. We've been reaching the lost. Don't tell me that God isn't an awesome God. Don't tell me that God isn't an awesome God. Tell me he didn't give you a Mercedes. Tell him he didn't enhance your bank account. Amen. But don't tell me he's not an awesome God. Huh? And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You got to be committed. You got to be devoted. Amen. You got to be determined. I'm going to follow God. Amen. Come H E double L. Hallelujah. Hell or high water. I'm still following God. I'm still serving God. The Bible says, I look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. All right, I've been fronting you too long. I've been, been here too long. I've been here too long. I'm preaching to myself even. I got to save some of this stuff for later. Amen. Then I got to save some of this stuff for later. Now we really preaching 52 Sundays. I'm telling my wife, you know, I need you. You know, Mother's Day and any other couple of days you want to go ahead and amen. And, uh. You let me know if you're willing to preach too. Amen. Reverend Jimmy done already put his name on the list. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Oh, listen. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting it set because when you come in, I know you still got to wear masks. Amen. Maybe your first time I'll give you a mask. Hallelujah. My wife got me a mask that says Cowboys. Hope they do all right. She got me a mask that says Red Sox. I don't sport that too much, Mike. You know what I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
I, I got a mask that says way maker, miracle worker. Amen. Come on, listen. I'm going to tell you, we, you know, we, we want to keep everybody safe. But I'm going to tell you, I need, I'm waiting for when you guys are able to sing again. I'm waiting for when you guys are able to sing and they can hear your melodious voices. I'm going to tell you, you want to talk about the captives being set free? Huh? I think of in the ancient of days, we would come in here, amen, and hallelujah, we would sing to the glory of God. Some of us knew the song, some of us didn't, but they put us in a way where you thought we all knew the song. Huh? Huh? And I'm going to tell you, then we'd come down and they'd clap and you'd hear testimonies and we'd do it again and the ladies home would do it. Amen. We got the children. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. The children worshiping God. Man, I'm going to tell you, this is God's day of the week to shine for Youth Challenge, in Youth Challenge, with Youth Challenge, this Friday night and all the Friday nights to come in September. Tell your neighbor, you got to get here. I know you got to go and you got to log and sign up. Amen. I signed up and got a receipt on my phone that I signed up. Amen. But listen, I was coming in with y'all if they wasn't letting me in on mine because sometimes I mess it up. Sometimes my daughter has to say, Dad, let's start all over. But I knew that y'all was going in. I was going to say, Corey, count me in the number. Count me in the number. But I looked when I got in the, the when I parked, and I said, look, I got a receipt. Amen. You know how it was when they sent you that receipt for the concert, huh? And you was going to get your groove on. Uh, can they say groove? Is, 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 we, got, we got people that know about groove. Some of y'all in the middle looked at me like, mm, mm, mm. Lord, he old. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Groove, right? They going to get back to the ministry, Reverend Jimmy, and Google. Groove. What is that? What was Pastor talking about? Listen, you know you was out there getting ready Friday night to turn it up. Am I right? Now we in God's house. Let the spirit of the Lord come upon you. Amen. And let the spirit of God pull you up out of Babylon. Let him pull you up out of the world. Amen. Let the spirit of God that's in you. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to be devoted to God. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be determined. I'm going to allow God to work this thing in me. I'm going to allow God to get the best out of me. I'm going to allow God to cleanse me, purge me, wash me. I'm going to allow God to use me. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. 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 My brother, Reverend Louis, said, you got to throw some things off. Oh, to hear that one, you got to either get him to preach it or you got to read the book of Acts, chapter 27. And I would encourage you go right on through the 28. Because I'm here to find to let you know, amen, just because God got you through one thing doesn't mean that you won't face other things. You are going to have opposition, amen. You are going to have opposition. Praise God. You are going to have opposition. You are going to have some hostility, amen. But you're going to have to push your way through, amen. You're going to have to push your way through. Ezra, hallelujah, understood how to push. Ezra had the eloquence and the way of preaching and teaching, and he was able to get the Persian king to work with him. See, you're going to have to use what God gave you. You, you know when we was on the street, when we was in the world, amen, hallelujah, amen, wasn't nobody getting over on you, amen, and they tell you, and just please, no flashbacks, all I got is 19, I said 20, I got 19, man, they get you to go, I got 1950, amen, they're staying at 20, uh, you, no, I got 1999, amen, you wasn't giving it up because you know you needed 20, amen, so you got to let the devil know, hallelujah, no, I got scripts in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm an overcomer. Amen. Because God said I'm an overcomer. Amen. I can fight the good fight because the Bible says, amen, hallelujah, that I could run this race by fighting the good fight. Amen. You got to let them know God loves me when they say 
Hey, they don't care about you. They're not even calling you. They're not even writing you a letter. Amen. You got to let them know. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm here to tell you, God loves you. I said, God loves you. He loves you. Give your devoted, your devotion, your allegiance to him. I'm here to tell you, you can listen to wise counsel or you could listen to your own counsel. Write it down. Proverbs 14, 22, I believe it is, talks about you. A man will seem, your way seems right to you. I paraphrase. Or you could go to Proverbs 15, 22, and it talks about how we ought to get multitude of counselors. You need some folks speaking into your life. You hear what I said? You get groups. Huh? You wake up and somebody's ready to give you a devotion. Somebody's in the kitchen cooking. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Getting a hot breakfast ready for you. Oh, they gave me cold cereal. I know, but they kept the milk cold enough for you. Hallelujah. Amen. They getting it ready for you. Amen. And they serve it to you. We even, you even got one of your peers or two of your peers, amen, in there to help serve. Amen. You ought to reciprocate and say, look, after a month or two, you know, maybe I should get in that kitchen. You talk to Reverend Jimmy. Amen. He'll send you to me. I'll send you to Reverend Hernan. But the deal is we're going to try to help you. Amen. That we could understand what God is doing. Then you go to group. Somebody's waiting there. Amen. And maybe another group. Sister Diane, one time, I believe, she did three, four groups in a day. Huh? Three to four groups with energy, because I know her, with energy. Huh? With energy. I sat in some of her classes. I'm going to tell you, very energetic. You cannot go to sleep in her group. And then you go to lunch and come back, and you get some free time. And you go down to the weight room and lift and get big. Or you go to your bedroom, amen, and get some sleep. Am I right about it? See, God loves you that much. He's devoted that much to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, this is what I love about God. Same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, Pastor Willie. Same God. Amen. We had snacks. Am I right, Reverend Jimmy? We had snacks. Am I right, Reverend Hernan? Amen. And you get Corey, am I right? We had snacks. Amen. I wouldn't call that snacks. I think y'all get another meal. I think y'all get another meal. You know, we had snacks, you know, a cupcake here, some, some cookies here. Amen. But we were grateful. And I believe you're grateful. You know how I know you're grateful? Let me tell you how I know you're grateful. Amen. Because you're still here. Because you're still here. Might not be where you want to be, but you're still here. Amen. Still allowing God to work on you. Amen. I'm going to have to wrap it up. I'm going to have to cut it short. Amen. Hallelujah. So we got to listen. If you don't listen, amen, then you could get too comfortable. You could not only get too comfortable, but the preacher said storms will come. A nor'easter will come. And Eliza will come. Amen. Storms will come that are you ever had a storm in your life? Go back in your life. Have you ever had a storm in your life caused by addiction? Caused by your own criminal behavior lifestyle? I'm talking about me, but I'm going to let you know that God is good. Have you ever, the preacher said, you could lose time. Amen. Hallelujah. You could lose time, but God redeems the time. Man, I'm going to tell you, listen, God is doing it, has done it, and will continue to do it for me. My goal, my prayer now is that one of my daughters or all three of them, someone becomes the preacher that God wants them to be, the worshipers that God wants them to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Just giving their heart to Jehovah God, that they would want to study the word. I already know they can study. You don't get on the dean's list by not being able to study. I want them to be able to study the word of God. I want them to be able to study something that's going to help them, that's going to bring to pass amen what God has for them in their life hallelujah 
All right, I'm going to close. I done messed up a good sermon. I done messed up a good sermon. See, that's what happened when you bring this and you, because there's so much stuff in the word. There's so much stuff in the word, amen. Ezra was an example of how God can use a man. Bishop used to say how God could use humankind because he didn't want to exclude the women. I want you to know, ladies, you can preach, you can teach, amen, hallelujah. I know you could, amen, you could serve, and I know you could, amen, do these other things that they say women do. But if you get in this word and see, women can do a lot more than what we think they can do. Huh? I'm going to tell you, listen, and I'm glad God gave you all that assignment, amen. I don't know. I'm discombobulated, amen, when I got a headache, a toothache, I'm crippled. Pulled out the gallbladder, I was done. You hear what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you the truth. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I knew I could pray when they told me that gallbladder's got to go now. I knew I could pray. And they said, you know, it's a very simple procedure, and we do this and we do that, no problem. But I got to tell you, this is the doctor, there's always the slight, there's always that, I got to tell you, I got to, so if you could sign right here. I'm like, God. Tell me if you prayed like this one more time, God. If, if you give me one more chance, God, I know when I was over the road and I was reaching out that way and you got me out that way, and I know when I was reaching and looking and trying to tell you, amen. But if you would bless it, I would pray, God, if you get me out of this one. And here I stand. Yeah. Oh! Man, I'm going to tell you, in the last year, I done had more surgeries than I haven't had. There was nothing wrong with me. I'd go to hospital visiting people. But I guess when you turn that corner, when you get older, hallelujah, get ready for it. Amen. Enjoy where you're at right now. Take care of the body God has given you right now. I said take care of the body God has given you right now. Be devoted to it. Amen. I was talking to Terrence, and Terrence said, man, I didn't know you was built like you was back in the day. And I didn't catch what he was talking about at the beginning. But, but that's all we did. We came into ministry. We, once we got saved, we didn't want to do crazy stuff. But we worked out, and I mean, we worked out crazy. You, you understand? Then we got the privilege to go and raise money for the ministry. And we got the privilege to come in God's house and to worship him. We got the privilege to wear, amen, clean clothes, amen, that somebody either washed or fold or they blessed us with. I'm closing. How many closes is that? I'm still working on that one. I'm, I'm working on that one. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm working on it. Lord, help me. I'm working on it. I remember the first suit I had. I don't think nobody here remembers except those that's been around a while. Anybody remember the first suit I had? I had a corduroy brown, brown suit. Man, you couldn't tell me that God wasn't good. I don't know if I'd wear a corduroy brown, brown suit right now. If you do, that's on you. You know, I'm sorry. I came in the ministry with a Bobby Brown haircut minus the Bobby Brown. Do <laughs> you understand? Every little step I take. <laughs> All right, I'm not messing with y'all. I'm not messing with y'all. I'm <laughs> I'm not, listen, you got to be able to have fun in God's house, but let me tell you, this is fun, but this is the real deal. This is the truth. This Ezra, amen, hallelujah, was a man of God, and his contemporary, let me just give this to you, Haggai also was a man of God, amen, like I believe the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was a man of God. How do I say, and why do I compare them? Because when they spoke, amen, they spoke to America's conscience. Sixties, 
Haggai, if you would read it, did it way back in the ancient of days. Amen. And Haggai got things done. Haggai was a change agent. I'm here to tell you, you about to get things done. Whoa, I'm really landing now. You about to get things done. You about to change things. You're about to make it happen in your family. Your son, your daughter are going to get saved by the power of God because you're going to pray for them. You're going to worship with them. You're going to read scripture over them. You're going to believe in God. You're going to lay between the porch and the altar and say, my God, if you be God at all, help me hear my I cry, oh Lord. Now I know things happen. That's why I said hope and recovery, that's a reality. I know things happen. I know some folks that passed away from COVID. I know some that are sick. I know some folks that passed away just passing away. I know some folks, amen, hallelujah that if you would give them the opportunity to say Jesus, they would say Jesus. But they got tubes in their mouth. But I'm going to say like my wife's Wela, she's 100. I said, well, I got to have my mask. I got to do social distancing. She said, I don't. I'm 100 years old. What can the world do to me? This lady likes prices right. And the Christian channel, amen, and it's, it's the Spanish Christian channel. That's what she does. But she could still walk hither and thither, right? If she needed to, she could, you know, take care of herself in certain ways. And then of other ways she has to help, have, you know, have help. But the point is, what are you going to do with what you have now? What are you going to do? Huh? Who's going to pray for your family if you don't? Who's going to intercede for your children if you don't? The next generation, that's a senior in college, wave your hand. How many other seniors in college in here? How many other seniors in college? Look at you. You're the only one in the room. Hallelujah. So when the other seniors come in or the juniors go into college, who's going to speak to them? Not us. We have to go over there, social distancing, with a mask, and say, would you speak to the people, hallelujah, that are in the college, hallelujah, at that grade level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She greeted me when I came in. I was so happy that she let me in because if she didn't let me in, that means what she seen was not letting you in. They were pretty adamant and determined too there. Amen. She looks nice. She's young. Amen. She was with her mom. But the real deal was you wasn't getting in if, and you know that, but we're here. We are in the house of God, worshiping, praising. You tell Reverend Vanessa, thank you for the worship and thank you for the praise. Amen. Okay, I'm going to close, but this is what I do. I'll preach some of this another time. Amen. I'll preach some of it. Amen. But I need you. Hallelujah. If anything, anything I said spoke to you, we want to pray real quickly. Daniel, we want to pray. Can we do a social distance, distancing here? I want you to come. I want to pray for you. Amen. I'm not keeping this. Amen. You know how we do it. Ushers, we got to make sure they're six feet apart. All right. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. One Marine to another. Hoorah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We getting it done. I just want to pray. Hallelujah. Just lift your hand. If you're already stable, just lift your hand. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. Anything that was said? Maybe I didn't say it through the word of God. Hallelujah. Maybe it's in the notes. You'll get part two, but you're going to come and just ask God for prayer anyways. You're going to ask God to touch you anyways. Amen. Come on. We got room. Somebody show my brother where he needs to go. All right. Help him out.
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I wish I could call you by name because I'd run and I'd, I'd hug you and pull you up here. Amen. I'd, I'd, I'd pull you up. Hallelujah. My brother. Hallelujah. My brother from the mountaintop. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell him I'm not going around the corner when I leave. Will you tell him? Hallelujah. Come on. This is your moment. This is your time. Hallelujah. I want to pray. I'm going to pray all of you that are there, then extend your hands. If you're behind them, extend your hand and just say, God bless them. Amen. That's all you say is God bless them. Heavenly Father, I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray, oh God, hallelujah, it's your anointing and the anointing that's on me. I know it's yours. I recognize it's yours. I want to pray that you would release it. Release it to my left. Release it to the middle. Release it to my right. Hallelujah. Release it to the rows of folks that are here with their hands raised. Father, and if any one of them needs you as Lord and Savior, let them repeat after me. Jesus, I need a Savior. I came here tonight because I need more than what I have. I admit, I recognize I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Will you come into my heart? Will you be my Lord and Savior? I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God that the preacher was talking about. That's the one I'm seeking. I'm seeking the hand and the face of God. I'm asking you in Jesus' name to save me. Save me tonight. Get in my core being, the marrow of the bone, in my mind, and let me know beyond shadow of a doubt that I am saved. I am saved. Jesus is my, Jesus is my, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Tonight I profess it. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me into all truth. I'm not going to be the same. I'm not going to be the same. I'm brand new. And the Bible backs it up. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. World, I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new woman. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, because I come to you in Jesus' name. If you said that, say amen. amen. Say amen like you mean it. Amen. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. every night. We'll see you next Friday. Actually, they'll see you Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I want to say, if before you go back to your seat, if you said a prayer to say, Jesus, come into my heart, and you wanted to do what Pastor Tyrone said he did, and you want somebody to follow up with you about that prayer that you just prayed, I want you to fill that out. And this young man right here with the blue shirt, amen, Reverend Louis Guerra, who also is a program graduate, Hallelujah. and we're going to hear his testimony if you haven't heard it already, right? I want you to give that paper back to him if you want somebody to follow up with you about the prayer that you just prayed. Pastor Tyrone shared his testimony. He came through this ministry. He got down on his knees. He prayed, and God set him free. He prayed. Pastor 
Amen. Bishop Raul Gonzalez came in as a heroin addict and he prayed a prayer and the Lord Jesus Christ set him free and the rest of his life he got his family back together and he devoted his life to helping other people find their freedom in Christ. Fill out that, uh, 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 that paperwork. We'll treat it confidentially, but you're saying I want somebody to follow up with me about the prayer that I just prayed. Amen. And give it to Reverend Louis. Rev, I want you to stand at the back so that as people go out, they may have filled out that card. Amen. The card will not be used to send you advertising. Amen. Or to send you a different this and a different that. Amen. You're saying, I want somebody to follow up with me about the prayer that I just prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Tyrone. What an amazing man of God. What a powerful word. What a wonderful testimony. Bless Pastor Tyrone Glasby and his family, Lady J, and those beautiful young ladies, oh God, as they're going to school and they're seeking you, Lord. And, and Lord, we just pray a blessing, oh God, on Glory Chapel Family Outreach, a blessing on Youth Challenge of Connecticut, a blessing on Glory Chapel International Cathedral and the ministries of Youth Challenge International around the world. We thank you for helping us during this COVID time. We pray, Lord God, that during this recovery month, oh God, and even, Lord, as we just, Father, recognize a day on the calendar, Lord God, to remember those who have passed away, Father God. We pray comfort for those families, oh God. And we pray, Lord God, for those that are still struggling, oh Lord. They might find a Lord. They will find, hallelujah, a way to go forward in Jesus' name. Lord, and for those evangelists that are here tonight, they don't even know they're going to be sent out. But Lord, as they get closer to you, and you drop a word in their spirit, about what you are preparing them to do. Oh God, that it won't just be doing works, oh God. It would be because they are filled with the spirit of the living God. It would be because they are devoted like Ezra was de devoted, oh God. It would be because, Lord, you made them new, hallelujah. And they are so grateful, they just want to, hallelujah, do whatever you want them to do. And you're going to bless them, Lord, accordingly. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said... Amen, amen, amen. Now we'll see you again on Sunday. We'll be in the house, amen, for an 11 o'clock service. Pastor Tyrone, you can see him preach on every Sunday. The Glory Chapel Family Outreach YouTube channel. And here, the Glory Chapel International Cathedral YouTube channel. Amen, be blessed. And make sure you greet somebody socially appropriate. Amen, we're going to have the ushers help everybody find their way. And we'll look for you on Sunday again. Amen. In the house of the Lord or live stream as we have done tonight. We thank Elder Lester for doing all this work in the building and helping us get this stream out tonight with his son Michael. Hey, Amen. His grandchildren Logan and Chloe are right up there. Hallelujah. Doing the work of the Lord. We love you so much.